This week on Inside the Laser Lab, we mean business. Business cards, that is. Welcome back, everybody, to Inside the Laser Lab. This week, we've got... Oh, hey, there we are. Hey, there we are. We've got Nick here. What's uh, up, everybody? Walker's out today, so Nick's going to be our cutting expert today. Uh, we'll keep the expert to a minimum. We oh, won't, we'll keep it on. Too little bit. credit, my friend. <laughs> Walker's actually out doing an install for a customer who bought three Muse and setting up a, a nice maker space with the Muses. So he's out actually in Arizona today doing a nice big install. So if you're in Arizona, you see Walker wandering about, you know, <laughs> send him back this way if you would. Yeah. And if you want, ask him for a business cards, which is what we're talking about today, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Business cards. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. And normally business cards aren't that exciting, but when you have a laser cutter, let me tell you, the possibilities get really fun. Yeah, not only fun, but they're kind of endless. Like it's really like yeah. how, like what do you want to do today? Right, like, exactly. right. So we're going to take a look at some of the stuff we've done already and we're just going to skip by the, the common paper cards and stuff for right now. And we're going to go right to some just really interesting kind of stuff here. So Oh, yeah, we we'll probably show yeah, it on the, we'll the other camera here. There you go. So this one we actually did on the fiber laser. This is a very thin aluminum card which has a uh, orange coating on it. So uh, we actually have a video of this, don't we? I think uh, Charles, we can show you real quick on the fiber laser, which is a little bit different than we'll do today. Um, it'll actually. Uh, Uh, so we just had some, the overlay laid there, but as you can see, this is blazing through this um, aluminum coated uh, material very, very quickly, and the accuracy, I think, speaks for itself. Yeah, uh, and the, I mean, there's a design across the whole card, so uh, it makes sense that it would take a few seconds to do that. And it's lightning fast on the fiber. Yeah, if you can imagine, this took about uh, you know 40 seconds on the fiber, and then if you did the same thing on the Muse, it would take about three minutes. And that's a card that's going to last, right? <laughs> oh, not only <laughs> last, but this is going to turn heads. This is very yeah. impressive. You want to oh, go. Um, oh yeah, I guess we're way back over there. As like soon as you see that, you know you know you got something different. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Charles. I'll do it here on this uh, the Logitech. Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean when you look at the detail there, not only on the small font, but on the uh, Japanese uh, logo in the back. We actually did this card and this logo in uh, I guess in memorum of uh, Walker. Walker what does that like say on there? It's, uh, it's the Wabi Sabi the design. Wabi -sabi. This is uh, one of Walker's favorite thing in Japanese cultures, the Wabi Sabi. Uh, um, it's the imperfect uh, is, is better than the perfect kind yeah. of theory. Absolutely. They'll actually take old, um, uh, I guess you would call it like old relics, old things from the past, and they'll repair it using gold and other precious metals because to them, that, uh, that holds more value than something that's maybe pristine. Uh, I've seen that with like porcelain plates and stuff like that. Oh, it's the best. When they have the gold face yeah, of the crack exactly. of the porcelain plate. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It, it yeah. really does pop out. Yeah, so we did the same thing uh, on the Muse actually just a second ago yeah, we just, uh, with wood. And camera. we did a little bit smaller scale on this one. Uh, just kind of so kind of make it adorable. Just give you a scale factor. Just a little bit smaller scale than normal size card. But on the wood, um, it's kind of a neat thing because you have a, you know, a different texture. And when you hand someone a wooden business card, you kind of mean business. You're kind of sending a message with that you right away. That like <laughs> absolutely that uh, you're a woodworker or if you're a designer. Um, I think having a wood business card is actually real beneficial. We have some um, some great examples of that, right? Uh, we do. Oh, did I jump on the gun? Uh, we'll, we'll pick those oh, yeah, up. Yeah, we'll in pick just those a up in bit. a second. Sorry but about that. Yeah. Uh, beyond the business cards, you also have these really neat kind of business card holders. This is a. Uh, desk holder example. It's actually one of our free projects, right? You can personalize this and put your logo on the top or the sides and actually die cut things out, put your name on the front panel. So that's a free project. It's personally customizable. Yeah, just go to uh, Laser 101 to get that project. Here's one that I made. Uh, as you can see, I did a living hinge. So that piece of wood actually continues all the way around to the bottom. And then I put some personalized things in the back and then did some die cut on the back for full spectrum laser so it sticks out. Oh, you have so many techniques on that, that one piece right there. That's, yeah, that's, that's really impressive. It's one of my favorite little pieces. And this is a great little business card holder you can actually take and uh, have around if you're, oops, this looks like we had that uh, reverse. But the, um, so you can uh, hand out business cards. It has a great little leather strap here. Uh, and you can put either cards in here, credit cards and things. This is one of my favorite things to have at trade shows. It's actually made by uh, Steamy Tech, one of our favorite uh, customers, steamytech.com if you want to uh, pick one of these things up. But this is just three pieces of wood that were cut and layered together, as you can see in the stack there, with just a laser cut piece of leather that's glued down to a channel that was engraved out. 
with a real easy snap put on. And I mean, these things you can make in about 10 minutes. And uh, I would say the cost of making one of these, maybe a dollar, maybe you know $2. What they, uh, they sell them for? I think they sell them for $25 or $40, somewhere it's, in there. I, um, mean, I believe they're $25 on their site. And I think they sell for 40 bucks at, tra at uh, festivals and trade shows. Sounds like a bargain to me. It's beautiful. Absolutely. And then if you think about, like, if you just have a few examples of these, whether you're uh, selling your other items or not as just one of your offerings, I mean, really, that's what you're doing here. You're it's adding... Expanding your uh, your repertoire and what you can offer to the public and stuff. Absolutely. It looks like we got some uh, hellos coming on Facebook. Uh, looks like the Dezel, uh, Jeanette, and John are saying hello again. Some of our regulars uh, here, yeah. always always with us. Glad you made it again. Uh, Yayo, how you doing, sir? Glad you checked in again. Uh, good to have you back this week. Um, if you guys have made a business card or a business card holder, we'd love to see it. Uh, share in the comments, or could, this is a really easy way to submit to the weekly contest, right? I, nothing's too small, you know, for the weekly contest. When nothing's you've got too small. That this kind is of door. detail and that yeah. kind of, you know, precision. Absolutely. Uh, I also note that uh, I mean, the, what is? Do you know what the the font? That's a small font size. That's a pretty small font. That's about as small as you can go with the Muse at 500 DPI, and that's uh, eight font or eight point font right there. And that's with a that's with a 2.5 lens. Uh, 2.5 inch. You could yeah. do much much uh, much more detail than 1.5 inch yeah. lens. Uh, you can go down to about six point uh, five and a half point. Uh, but uh, at that point, you're getting about so the thickness of the letters is about the thickness of the beams. So you can't go much, much smaller than smaller. that. But the fiber laser, you can go far smaller. Uh, we actually have a great example of one of our previous videos. We'll put it up as a link up and above. But um, it's a um, example from the fiber laser to the um, Muse at their highest DPI, kind of comparing font size and then speed and accuracy. Mm. And those lenses that we use for the Muse are also interchangeable with, uh, you can get the same sizes for your Pro machines. Absolutely, so well whether you're Pro, Muse, or Hobby Series, you can get the same set of lenses uh, that can really add a, a level of versatility to your engravings that you really can't get doing any other way. And uh, if you can't afford one right now, you can join the weekly contest. Easy way to get a lens. Okay. Doesn't matter what system you own, we'll get a, a full lens kit set up for you. That includes your cone, your uh, lens kit, and your, uh, your focus billet. Everything you need to uh, make that adjustment to uh, changing from your standard 2.0 lens to 1.5 or better. And if you've collected all the lenses already, you can still get a, uh, a nice 250 discount on a thousand dollar purchase. Absolutely. So if you do have, let's say, the full array of lens kits and you're like, ah, I've got enough lenses, or let's say you have the lenses you need, you can always use that $250 just as a, you know, uh, like consider it a coupon in your next purchase, whether you need a new tube, uh, you know, a new fume extractor. That's quite uh, a things. coupon. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, that's a that's half off some yeah. tubes. That's a, that's that's a pretty good deal. So, that's really good. Um, if you have a laser business and you're not entering the laser contest every weekly, like you're, I don't say you're making a mistake, but you're kind of selling yourself short. That's yeah. that's some free income for you, really. And quick. some some free publicity too from us. Absolutely, we'd love to. So every weekly contest winner, we not only announce on our shows, but it, it's on the, it lives on the front page of our website for an entire week. So that gets thousands of visitors every day. Uh, we'd love to share um, your talents with all those visitors. That's right. Yeah. So. Um, so you're going to show us something today. You're going to show us. Yeah, how to so go through RE3 and make, make a business card. Yeah, so we're going to do it all on RE3, and I think that's the best part about the new RE3 software. So whether you not have a Muse or whether you've just picked up one of our new uh, Pro Series machines, using RE3 makes it really easy to do all your design right in the software. Now, let's say you're an Illustrator user, an Inkscape user, a Corel Draw user, and that's just what you know and use. Well, sure, that's great. It's all, mm -hmm. Keep using that. You can always just send it with a print driver, save as a AI, PDF, SVG, DXF. But those skills translate. Absolutely. There's nothing different in yes. this design uh, uh, software than what you'd find in those other places. So if you need to make a quick adjustment, mm -hmm. add some text or whatever, but we'll show you all that uh, right here in the software. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take a, uh, a piece of cardstock. Now, what we have here is just some standard, I don't even know the weight of this cardstock, but it's, uh, it's pretty thick. It's got a little bit of texture to it. Mm -hmm. um, cardstock, we're just going to throw that in the laser and uh, get a picture of what we got going on. So. I've got it down in the laser bed. Now I'm going to use the uh, camera capture function on the LCD touchscreen, which is what the LCD touchscreen is greatly used for. I mean, it not only makes things a lot faster, but on the Muse itself, you hit the camera button once, it'll initiate the camera sequence, you hit it a second time, and it'll actually capture the entire bed. So as you can see in the software, there's actually nothing going on. I can actually use uh, what I need to get going while the camera's going on. So I figured I would make a card uh, for a turtle car wash. Turtle car wash. Turtle car wash. <laughs> so slowest I, car wash in town. Slowest. Absolutely. So I just drug over a quick uh, PNG of a shape of a turtle. So just I got right that. Off the web that just, you got that. Just uh, I literally Googled turtle icon, mm -hmm. and that was one of them that popped up. Just had an easy one. So I drug that in real quick. Now the first thing you need with a business card is you need the size of the card, right? Yep. Well, luckily we have a uh, tool right here, the rectangle tool, which we can just go and grab and. 
I'm just gonna arbitrarily make that that size. You know why? Because it doesn't really matter, because I can come right over here, and I know the height of a business card is two inches, which I'll put that in there, and the width is 3.5. Yeah. So precisely, I can have the uh, size of the business card I need. Now, that might seem insignificant with a business card, but let's say that was a shape of a part you needed to have in, or the size of a notch uh, for right. a piece. You can quickly make that, as the, that uh, adjustment right in the software, and then have the uh, size be precisely accurate. It's so, really easy to do, too. So another great thing about software is that when you zoom in, it zooms in on what you're highlighted on. So just by hitting the plus bar there a few times, you can zoom in right to what you're looking at now. I've got this uh, turtle design over here, which we're just going to drag over and place inside the card so that we have you know, something to work with. So here you are. You're just designing your card right in the software. Right in RE3. So I'm just going to just make that a little bit smaller. We'll put that up in the corner. Is now, that a sea turtle? I, I think that is a sea turtle. Tur uh, Charles is our turtle expert. Uh, Charles, <laughs> what kind of turtle is that, my man? That is sea a sea turtle. turtle coming from our, our sea turtle expert, Charles. I appreciate <laughs> that, Charles, our producer, turtle expert. If you ever have a question about turtles, turtles, send it. That's charles at fullspectrumlaser.com. He is a turtle expert. Turtle if you expert. have turtle questions, ask Charles. Uh, also knows a lot about graph design, moving graphics, and lasers. And producing our show. Well, he's an all-star producer, but like turtles. Turtles. Uh, He'd like to replace us with turtles. He knows more about turtles than I'm anything. I'm a little worried yet. that you know, we're going to have he's two turtles. He's got a turtle back. He actually cat. drives a yellow H2 Hummer. He <laughs> loves turtles so much. That's how much he's into turtles. That's an entourage joke. Um, okay, got a question coming in from Facebook. Uh, what do we got? Uh, Daniel Rowe is asking, how important is it to do the height measurement when using the camera of the Muse? Excessively important. Now, I'll be honest with you, I, before the show, had already grabbed the height measurement of the camera. Now, you may think, well, why does it matter? The camera is at the same height arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. But we do take information from the camera in the height process. So having the camera in focus is essential before doing the camera capture. Um, another thing to keep in mind is the camera likes flat surfaces, um, so mm -hmm. a plane of surfaces. So you have things in there that are on multiple levels. Yes. Uh, that will affect the camera capture a little bit too, and also a piece of uh, wood that's bowed a bit, especially if the bow is you know a quarter of an inch difference from one side to the other, that can affect the stitching process just a little bit as well. So ideally the stitch process happens best on a flat plane. So as you can see, when we do the camera capture of this uh, card uh, inside, it's uh, really accurate. I didn't even put it in there very straight. We'll zoom in a little bit so we can see um, the stitches and kind of drag around. but. It looks like we got a pretty good, nice. um, like even the lines match up really good there. The lines match up good on the edge. It uh, looks like we got a really good stitch on this one. So uh, height, I'd say on a scale of one to extremely important, about a nine and a half. I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a button click, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's it, not that, uh, it's well not the, a difficult process. Not a difficult process, but uh, just using the focus billet and making sure mm -hmm. the head's in focus, uh, you know, maybe takes 10 seconds, but uh, really important to do that. Uh, looks like Yayo's asking a question as well. Oh, yeah, he was asking if we can show how to use the different lens kits. I have two, and the only thing I know, it's one's closer than the other, but really don't know the difference. Uh, so, Yayo, uh, if you want to comment uh, which two lenses you have, uh, we'd love to talk about those two differences. Really, the 2.0 lens is your most versatile lens, and that's the one that comes with your Muse. So this lens is great for cutting and engraving, has that perfect middle point. It's our most versatile lens. When you go to a 1.5 inch lens, this is really an engraving lens because your spot size is now much, much smaller. Now, the actual focus billet for all those lenses are, are the same. So the same actual focus distance away, just you'll notice the, uh, the cone is a little bit a different little bit, yep. for, the, uh, for the different lenses. So now, you get a new cone with each, each lens as well. Absolutely, each kit comes with a new cone and the lens. So the other big difference you'll notice is on the 1.5 inch lens, your spot size is smaller, therefore your effectiveness of cutting has diminished greatly. So <coughs> while you're having a more accurate engraving, you have essentially put a smaller um, saw blade, if you will, on the laser and can only cut as much as the 1.5 inch lens will allow. Now reversely, if you go to the 2.5 inch lens or the 5 inch lens, you're affecting the laser um, in different ways. The 5 inch lens actually increases your effectiveness, uh, which again diminishes the cutting ability of the lens, mm -hmm. but allows you to uh, engrave further away. So you can gr engrave inside of bowls. Bowls, deeper, deeper things and stuff like that. Absolutely. This is used a lot with um, uh, sometimes with the rotary attachment, with the riser, but uh, mostly used with using uh, bowls, cutlery, um, plates, yep. uh, those type of things are engraved where the lens can't be that close to it. A lot of people use it for engraving inside of things, whether it's inside of a box, inside of a jewelry kit, yep. etc. Uh, then your 2.5 inch lens is 
really just a little bit of a bump the other way uh, from the two inch lens in that it's gonna cut a little bit better than the uh, two inch lens, but again, does not engrave as well. So that's why the yeah. two inch lens is really our middle uh, middle ground, kind of like the sweet spot lens. It's a lot of information. We'll put, go ahead and post a blog uh, entry uh, with the uh, YouTube video so that you can see all that information there. Actually, uh, just read it as you, as you want. So, and another question? Oh, uh, Jeff, the uh, five-inch lens, uh, you should have gotten a cone with that for sure because that's a much further distance. Uh, contact the sales rep, Jeff. We'll make sure that gets out to you uh, if you didn't get the right kit. But with the, uh, I believe you have a Pro Series machines, Jeff, which is a little bit different than what Yayo has uh, with the Muse. On the Pro Series, the lens uh, cone is actually the same. Um, what changes is your focus height. Now, you should have got an updated focus billet with that lens, which obviously was a much longer yeah. focus distance than your standard 2.5-inch, uh, uh, like we have here, an example. Um, <laughs> Isn't that neat? Our penguin. I'm sorry it's not a turtle, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, so, back into the software real quick. Um, so, as you can see right here, we are... Getting started with our design process now, all we have right now is our turtle and our square. Now, I think the first thing you gotta do is you gotta add the title. Now, luckily we have a text key right in here so you can just draw a text box and immediately we can go turtle. Turtle, there's a lot of fonts to choose from too. Uh, actually, we'll go turtle car care service. So, and you're right, uh, Scott, that's uh, another great thing is we have tons of fonts. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is scroll down over here and I'm just going to give this a fill and make it black uh, just because it's a little bit easier to see there. Uh, and then if you scroll up, you can see that there are a ton of fonts to choose from. Now, let's give it a fun one like this. Uh, Aklonika, that's a cool one. Okay. And then we Anything can with Comic Sans. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, we can take the font size and we'll bump it up. Uh, that's at 20, so we'll just give it a little bump up to 20, maybe just uh, up to like a 36. That's a little too much. So we'll just go and type in 30 point there, call it in the middle, and look at that. Perfect. So come out really good. Now, the only thing you have to do uh, once you grab the cursor with it is you come over to this little icon here, which if you hold and let it say rasterize, click the rasterize button, and you have it. Now, what I can do is actually delete the text that was underneath it because I have the... Um, uh, the raster layer here, so I can take this and just hit delete, and there we go. Looks like we got another question on Facebook. I'll, uh, is there any way to import RE3 only vector or raster? I end up having to delete uh, one of them. Uh, Daniel, no. Uh, inherently, the uh, RE3 takes both. Um, you can always hide or delete uh, which layer you, you don't need. Uh, we looked into uh, having an option where you can select one or the other like you have in uh, RE2, if you remember. But really, the process of that slowed it down so much that it was actually quicker in the long run just to delete one than it was to select one of the two and have it uh, then purge half the data mm -hmm. and only take in some of it than it is just to bring it all in. So we actually tested this a few different ways yeah. and had a few different examples of like how we go about it. And it was just faster and uh, had an easier workflow bringing in both and then giving both options in a, uh, in a folder to the left. So we're just going to add here some uh, details on the card. Um, we'll do this for um, Dave. Um, Kenderson, that sounds Kenderson. like a name. Uh, the phone number is 702-720-7272 probably. Uh, we'll a real Dave Kenderson is Yeah, maybe we should right go 555 five, five on this middle one. 555-1212, five, 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 <laughs> one, two, one, two, the old. And the old then we'll Hollywood. go Dave at Turtle Car Care. Whoops, Care Care? Turtle Car Care dot com. Now, as you can see, the... The box was just a little off, so all we got to do is take this and we can drag it. But um, again, we'll just go up here and we'll take our font, we'll put that back down to 12, so it's a nice thing. But we can probably go just a touch bigger than that since we have a little bit of room. We'll go up to, eh, we'll go up to 18, call it a day. So again, all we're going to do is put that in position. Uh, now I drag and drop, but I can nudge it with the uh, keys as well, which is what I'm going to do here. Uh, now, this is cool, but let's, uh, actually I got a, fill this you real got quick. More? Something more? Uh, just a little more. So we filled it. Now I got to rasterize that uh, text layer again uh, just so we can engrave it. And then I'll come back over and um, did I click too quick? So if your uh, software ever gets hung up like that, just hit refresh real quick. 
and all it's going to do is give a quick refresh and make sure that those things are done. Happens sometimes. Uh, we're actually in a weird Wi-Fi spot here in our laser lab, so sometimes it happens to us in here. Uh, we understand sometimes it happens at home with people too, but quick refresh on the browser usually corrects the problem. Um, we're looking into... One of the nice things of using a browser too. Absolutely. So we're going to zoom back into um, our design area here and just do a couple things to make this card a little interesting because we got a laser, right? So we got this outer box, which square corners are neat, but why don't we make those rounded, right? That's a, that's a lot more neat. And then really, I mean, if this is a car care service, I think we want to make sure that people know we're all stars. So let's go take the star icon. We can drag a little star right here. I'd say that's about the right size. And then I can drag that star. Whoops. Now again, I'll just control Z to move that. Now I'm going to take this. <laughs> I'm going to select the right thing and do that. So we're going to take the star here. There you go. And take it down. Now with the star selected and the outer box selected, I'm going to go up here. And just like you'd see in Illustrator, Inkscape, and other things, you can go just like this and go difference. And now that star is actually cut out of the box. Nice. So now we're going to have a die cut star down in the corner, add a little flair to it. Um, I thought what would be another neat little thing to do to give it a separation is we're going to go up here and just take the line icon. Now, the line icon is real powerful for a few reasons. Some people ask, why can't I just turn the laser on and use it like a saw and cut, and cut material off, um, you know, extra material you have in the bed? Or why can't I take um, a scrap piece and put it in there and then just chop off the, the pieces I don't want? This is a great tool to do that, or just put a nice little sliver into a card. Now, what I'm going to do is take right below this and the line bar, and I'm going to hold shift so it goes perfectly straight. And I'm just going to draw a line right in the middle of the card. Now, you're probably asking, now, why, why would you do that? Well, that line is going to give a nice little texture to the card, which is going to give it just that little extra bit of, I don't want to say flair, because, I don't a little, know. A I little pop. I feel like, yeah, pop is probably a word that Walker would be comfortable with me <laughs> or me using. If you're out there listening to Walker, text me and let me know if pop is, if I'm allowed to use the word pop. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, I got a cool little line there in the middle. I'm actually going to um, take this star and see, I can sub-select it and actually still adjust um, how I'm sizing that. So even though I've made that a compound object with those two things combined, I can still uh, select the sub-select one and adjust the size of it, which is honestly one of my favorite things with designing in this uh, software, which is a little bit different. Now, I'm just going to use the keys to give it a little adjustment there. Now, it looks like we have everything in a good spot. Now, we're engraving on cardstock. It's a little yeah. delicate, right? Yeah. This is a little Although it is, it is cheap enough that you can do a lot of uh, testing on it, too. So. I think that's probably the best part about it, is that you can absolutely uh, test and not feel too bad about it. Because I think a pack of cardstock right now goes for about five bucks, yeah. and you get like 50. 50 sheets. Yeah, and you so, can make multiple cards with one sheet. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do real quick is just drag my engraving layers up to the top and then my cutting layers down below. So we don't have anything that's going on where essentially you always want to engrave and then cut. So that right. if anything cuts and moves, it's right. not moving. <laughs> so since I got my uh, things ordered right, I'm just going to come over to my settings. I'm going to bump this up to 500 DPI. You could probably do card stack at 250 um, and make it just faster. And actually, just to show that we can do it at 250, we'll do it at 250. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, power all the way down to 12. This paper's really thin. Really delicate. delicate. Now, the cool part is uh, cardstock, we're using a, like a ivory cardstock, and we're actually going to lightly burn it. But if you had um, like a black or dark blue cardstock, it actually looks great when you... Uh, because it, it bleaches it, right? Absolutely. A lot like jeans, yeah. Yeah. Or using um, dark stone. Absolutely. Yeah. Same exact thing, yeah. So... That always blows my mind. It baffles me the way that works would think it would just make it darker. So because we have a few different uh, files, we're just going to change these. So we'll go, um, actually, we'll take the power down to 90, just so we don't have full-blown power going on those. Uh, cardstock 2, this is one you want to be very, very careful, and you don't want to leave unattended. Um, as always, you want to always make sure your laser is wash intended, but cardstock can catch fire really quickly if you um, just mess up the speed or the uh, the power. So always keep an eye on it. So make sure your air assist is on. Absolutely, another big one to uh, to, uh, to keep a look at. So I don't know, that looks pretty good to you. It looks great. I'm thinking this turtle car. I don't know. I'm a little bit of perfectionist. I think that needs to move a little bit. Of that. Anybody else? Just me. Okay. So okay. it looks good to me. And again, if you want to see how long the job's going to take, you can just hit the. Um, little uh, button there and you can see this job's only going to take two minutes and 30 seconds. Now, I think the best part is if I went and grabbed all of this, and I'm just going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see what's going on here. 
Now I've got everything I just set up for this card, right? Now if I just hit um, command, control C, control V. Now you're duplicating them. I just made two of everything. And then you can go back Oops. in and change the name if you want to really easily. Um, is it alt on, um, what's the, uh, is it control or function? What's it on PC? Paste. On, uh, on Mac, it's command. Uh, control is it Z? Control, right? Yeah. Control copy. There we go. So I was pressing the wrong function button. So as you can see, just a quick copy and paste and all that work that we did right there in RE3. Copy right over. Oops, did I not grab the... You can make a separate individual card for all the people in your company really easily. Really easy. So um, looks like I just didn't grab everything. We're just going to delete these ones so that we only run off one card. But here we go on the card stock again. We got... Um, on the cut power, uh, we're going to take this down to speed of 45 and keep the um, power at 90. That should adjust for all the vector, all of our vector lines. Just want to double check. OK, and then we're going to hit play to get going on that one. And we should have a cardstock business card made on the Muse in RE3 for you in just about two minutes and 41 seconds. Well, while we wait uh, for we that two minutes and 41 seconds, absolutely. Uh, why don't we take a look at what some people on uh, Pinterest have done with the uh, business cards Yeah, you well. found some neat stuff on oh, Pinterest, didn't you? some really cool stuff. So this one is paper, just like the one we're doing, but they have put a really intricate sort of uh, almost a lace design in there. Uh, I think when you're handing people, you can, you can see right through the card and really neat effect for just, you know, Hard stock. It's Absolutely. Really I think this shows if you're a laser, if you're a laser artist, this shows really quick what you do and who you are. Like yes. there's no question when you get handed that card that, oh wow, you do really cool, intricate things. Especially if you do uh, cloth and you do uh, lace designs and cloth. That's a, that's oh, a great perfect. Yeah. calling card. All right, what do we got next? These uh, here's are my favorites. Yeah. Here's a collection of things. These are all made of wood, but you can see, you know, shape is now, you know, irrelevant. Different. Yeah, yeah you, irrelevant. Can, irrelevant. you can just <laughs> do whatever shape you'd like. Uh, yeah. You know, whatever, whatever, you know, most connects to your company and makes things you know pop for you and stuff. Those I are all I really can see cool. someone who sells honey having oh, a yeah. honeycomb. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Really, yeah. Perfect. This one's great. This was done on a compact fiber, right? Yeah. Yep. That's made of metal. And so uh, you see some of the designs they do, uh, the, the care they took to make sure the little the middle of the E's don't fall out and things Absolutely. like that. It's all in the design. You can do that in the design software. Feel better. Okay. Oh, this is your favorite, right? Th this yeah. one really stuck out. All right. So this is a company that sells survival gear. And that laser card, that I mean, that uh, business card, is made of flattened beef jerky. So they took flattened beef jerky, they <laughs> put it inside the laser, and they engraved yeah. on the beef jerky. That place smells amazing. Uh, I know. Oh, that probably smells and like. It probably doesn't taste good, especially if it's been in your wallet. But I mean, <laughs> if you're out there on the survival. side of the mountain, yeah, if you're surviving, well, that's going to be some protein. You need some protein real quick. <laughs> that you Get need. those amino acids pumping. Yeah. So yeah, I love that one. That's a great one. This is a great business card holder you found. Yes, it reminds me of Steamy Tech. Uh, it's not theirs, but. Uh, I mean, it's got all those, those gears and everything, and I believe that that little you turn the thing and the, the little lid opens up. So they've got yeah, it looks uh, like mechanics. you spin the wheel and then yeah. the, I mean, I need that for my desk. <laughs> yeah, I know. You gotta get I mean, that, on that real quick. Have a business card, and they watch this little thing go crazy and stuff. And Absolutely, whole oh, process. Really neat. really neat. It looks like we are just about there. We're just finishing up the outline of the laser, but this is one of the best business card holders you found. I, I know, think. right? Because it it absolutely you know signals what your business is. Absolutely, that is as on brand is anything I've seen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah. And really easy to make. They used acrylic. Here's another acrylic card. Great uh, acrylic card. Yeah. And the color hues, acrylic, uh, and even the lucents from Romark are great for business cards. Yeah. Jimmy Dresden did a few of these, yeah. right? Yeah. And when you give people these, those edges just glow like like there's lights attached to them and stuff. And Absolutely. so, you know, that that's really something that uh, people immediately take notice of. You can look through it. So here we are, if we want to take a look, uh, we just pulled this out. Uh, whoops, I got just a little bit of soot on it, excuse me. Came out great. But looking great. Look wow. at that cool little card we just made on the Muse right there before your eyes. And that little bit of, uh, see how we did that in the center to give the, uh, yeah. just a little bit of texture, a little bit of pop. Um, to me, that's the neat thing you can do with the laser cut business cards. Even this one, which is very, very traditional. Um, giving it just that little bit of flair and, I mean, Come on, having the uh, having the star, yep. all those stacked up, that'd look really. You cool. never have to order business cards again. Customize never. your own, make them for your employees. But as we said before, you can also sell these things. You know, as part of your your repertoire of, of stuff to, to sell to people. Absolutely. And imagine, like, uh, let's say you're going to a networking event, mm -hmm. and let's say that networking event is for, uh, let's say you're going to a local 
home gardening networking event. And your goal was like, you know what, I'd love to sell these home gardeners little labels for their, for their uh, gardening mm -hmm. projects. Well, what if you handed out business cards that were just those little labels and they were just miniature versions of the product you hope to sell them anyway? It's brilliant. People die for things like that. Every time we go to trade shows, we always have people stop by our booth with their very cool business cards that they've uh, laser cut for the event, <laughs> whether it's a Maker Faire and they cut out little shapes of the Maker Robot and they put their information on the back, ah, or this. whether it's a Ren Faire and they cut little pirate uh, patches whatever, or pirate fest, <laughs> and their business cards are pirate patches they tie little strings to, and that's what they hand out to people. I, I've seen them where they have, they're just little like balsa wood kits that you can put yeah. together and you've got a little helicopter. That's what like we used that. to do uh, for a handout here at work. We used to yeah. hand out little, the little airplanes yeah. that could pop out of the business card. That was one of our favorite handouts. Like people still ask about those. Do you have any more of those planes left? <laughs> right. It's like we haven't had those in years. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> uh, so like I said, this uh, project was super easy to do right there in RE3. Um, I think the thing that it kind of expands from this is, if you can do that on cardstock, imagine all the other things you can do on cardstock. You don't have to worry about packaging, you don't have to worry about tags, you don't have to worry right. about labels. Those are things you normally have to outsource from another company. Not only can you offer that to your customers and your clients, so let's say you're selling tumblers. Well, an upsell for tumblers is you can have personalized tags on those tumblers that are in the shape of the company you're selling it for, wow. that is in the shape of the uh, company that you're doing them for. Let's say we were going to source someone to engrave tumblers for us because we didn't have la lasers here for some reason. <laughs> a really cool upsell trouble. for us, if you had the full spectrum laser logo die cut as a tag for all of them, that on the back just said, thanks for all you do, uh, so that all the customers had a little thank you, and everyone's going to hold on to that. Maybe they use it as a keychain, maybe they use it as an like ornament. Imagine something like that. I mean, even, oh, even, amazing. Uh, I love it. Amazing, it's such an easy little upsell uh, for your product. And cardstock, not, like I said, so inexpensive. And, and there's a lot of varieties for that too. You know? Different colors, colors, different textures, yep. different thickness. Um, I like the really thick cardstock that almost feels like cardboard that's mm -hmm. hard to bend. That stuff's a little bit more expensive from Joann's, but they have so many different colors and textures that you can do almost anything with it. I've lined inside of boxes with some of those uh, mm -hmm. uh, cardstock just because the texture is so cool. It kind of looked like uh, cloth. You're going to give something to represent yourself to someone. You might as well make it as nice as you can. Absolutely. And a business card, especially if you're a small business, like for us, yeah, sure, we make millions of cards for all 60s employees and we probably yeah. print maybe a mil, uh, maybe not, maybe a hundred thousand, yeah, maybe a hundred thousand business cards a year we print. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. If you're Toshiba or you're Microsoft or Google, you probably print way more. But if you are Sam's laser business and it's you and one employee, mm -hmm. Two employees should have amazing business cards. At least, yeah. Because there's only two of you. So open well, Your marketing list. department at least can have an upgrade too, so. There you go. Yeah. I can imagine retail shops, like, going to town with the laser <laughs> cutter. Because imagine, like, um, a, what's a good example? Um, what's the uh, store that looks like it's, like, a collection of other stuff from other places, but it's really just, uh, not Pottery Barn, but the other one. Oh, uh, Peer Imports. Uh, something, something like, like that. that. Um, anthropology. Anthropology. Oh, so, so each anthropology store has a artist designer in each store, which is whole purpose is constantly turning the store into something else. So they're just moving around the store nonstop, redecorating different sections of the store to have it look like the new collection of seasons or whatever they're bringing in. That's someone's job. I can imagine giving them a laser and letting them do some of their creative things like that. that through the Did roof. you hear the the Emmys had a had That's an engraving right. bar this year where the, they came to engrave the uh, the the Emmy awards right there at the bar? Right there at the bar. So when you won your Emmy, you got your Emmy engraved right there using a fiber laser. How cool and, is that? And you're having drinks with uh, celebrities and stuff while, yeah. while they go. That's very, very totally cool. Fun. So lasers are everywhere. I think even Rob Riggle was riding around with um, uh, Holiday Inn Express engraving <laughs> people's faces on pancakes. <laughs> like there's really no limits to what the laser can I do. Great, it's yeah. becoming really big. I even heard a reference in the uh, Disenchant uh, TV show on Netflix. They had a, a laser engraving. They had, they made references to engraving at, at a uh, at a uh, gift store booth. Very very cool. <laughs> so we are coming into a tr turning on all wheels I, I here. Think, yeah. I think Walker's gonna be sad he missed this episode. I, I think Walker. I hope he is watching uh, from a Walker. very comfortable place in Arizona, having a good time. <laughs> um, either way, I think that's all we got. Any more questions coming in from Facebook? Well, thanks for watching, everybody, yeah, and uh, till next week. Yeah, keep making.